Today on The Spirit Contemporary Life. Prophecies, visions, dreams, those three things, because those three things are an absolute key for you to walk in a place of moving into phenomenal areas of your life. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. You have probably heard me talk a lot about the spirit contemporary life, which is about what the Christian life should look like as a believer in today's world. Through this TV program, I want to show you that the spirit contemporary life can be one filled with love, filled with peace, with joy, with prosperity, with God's healing power, and so much more. In John 10.10, 10, it says Jesus came so you could have life and have it to the full. I truly believe that God has a special plan for each and every person watching today. You have a unique gifting, a calling on your life. If you can learn to be fully connected to Holy Spirit, relevant, cool, contemporary, you can be so effective in impacting others for the kingdom. You can experience the spirit contemporary life. So grab a pen, take some notes, and let's get into this message today and let it change you and equip you for an amazing future. Hey everybody, it is so good to have you with us today and we have got an amazing topic as I look at how can you believe God for the miraculous in a way that you are walking in the miraculous, literally bringing forth miraculous things. Now a lot of us think that when it comes to the miracle that you need that there's something you've got to be saved from and that is one area of the miraculous. If all of a sudden you get sick, a miracle can restore you to health. If all of a sudden your company gets into a horrible situation because something goes wrong, a lawsuit, and you need a miracle to bring your company back to where it is. But sometimes we only look at miracles as things that we need in desperate situations. But the miraculous power of God isn't just there for emergencies. It is also there to grow and to help us to move to areas of our lives that we have not gotten to yet. So, amazing relationships, moving on to incredible prosperity, moving on to an ability to reap the harvest and win people and influence them for Jesus. Too many people see the supernatural power of God only as something when they're in an emergency. But I'm going to talk to you today about learning the language of the heart, learning the language of Holy Spirit. What can you and I do to take our lives to whole new levels in every area of our life? So let's dive into this because I believe it's going to change your life. It says here in Acts chapter 2, in the last days, God says. Now, when you look at the Bible, it refers to the last days as from the time of Jesus' resurrection and on. So we are in those last days, and that's what it calls it. And then other times it calls it the former days, which is the days before the cross. And some people think it's going to end right now. No, it's just the term, meaning the last days after uh, the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus. Now here it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Now, sometimes when you look at a verse, it's good to look at what it does not 
say. So you'd think in these last days he'd be talking about incredible, uh, an ingathering of souls here, miracles like you've never seen before, prosperity on God's people to finance the best churches, missions, orphanages, television shows. You'd think that he'd be talking about rising up and leading nations, leaders that have incredible leadership ability, but that's not what it says. It, it's just kind of this, in the last days, which are supposed to be greater than the former, Bible says so. It says the light's growing brighter and brighter. So we are in a time that the time we're living in now should be more powerful, more miraculous, more incredible than even all the stories in the Old Testament. So why is he then talking about prophecies, visions, dreams? Those three things. Because those three things are an absolute key for you to walk in a place of moving into phenomenal areas of your life, taking your marriage to places you never dreamed possible, taking your businesses, your careers, taking your families, seeing God use you to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, to operate in our world, but in a spirit contemporary way, which means you're so spiritually alive, the gifts of the spirit are moving in you, operating in you, but you just fit right in to whether you're in the offices as a CEO, whether you are working for a television station, whether you are working in a school, a hospital, where you don't have, you're not even allowed to, where I am in here in Canada, you can't even do some things for Jesus in hospitals if it's not your job description. When I was working as a paramedic, they forbade me from sharing my faith with people. And so because they said, that's not your job, and if you do, you'll be fired. They basically told me that. So I had to think of ways to share incognito or where they would ask me a question. Uh, so I couldn't just go in screaming and preaching and being weird with people. And I didn't mind that at all. I kind of liked those rules because it kept all the crazy fringe Christians who, in my mind, made you cringe. And they didn't really have any power. They they were just condescending. They were judgmental. They were like talking to people about going to hell and, and they just turned off everyone. So I didn't mind those rules at all. I found they actually helped me to be contemporary, cool, to fit right in, to be kind, caring, loving. And as long as they asked me questions, I was allowed to answer them. So I figured out a ton of beautiful ways to move and to operate in the miraculous. So when we talk about a spirit contemporary leader, and you moving, I want to talk about how you should begin to prophesy. God's word, when you speak it, should always bring about the pictures, a vision, an internal vision, a dream of something in the future. Now, a lot of people think prophecy is when you get up in church and say, thus saith the Lord, or you look at somebody and say, God gave me a word for you. But that's not what it actually means right here, although that's fine to do that. But it says that you shall prophesy. In other words, you are going to speak to the future. You are going to speak your future before it happens. You are going to be begin to declare you what your marriage is going to look like. You're going to declare the health and the blessing of God on your family, the generations of your family. If you're in business, you're going to begin to prophesy where your business is going. If you want to begin to use God to help you uh, minister to people, pray for the sick, you're going to begin to prophesy that when you lay your hands upon the sick, they shall recover. We should declare prophesy our futures. So we'll talk about that. Then it says your young men are going to see visions. When you begin to declare God's word over your future, every scripture should cause a picture to rise up in your heart and in your mind. For example, if I take a verse and I declare right now that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it's a beautiful verse, but unless you make it personal, it really has no ability to help you see the answer. 
So as I prophesy to my future and declare that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I need to narrow that down and say, what am I thinking about? What am I believing for? Well, I'm a pastor. So I am believing God for more church plants, more services, thousands of more people coming in, then I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, means pastoring a church that's harvesting thousands of people, planting churches that are reaching thousands of people. So when I confess that verse, what does it bring? Now, if I needed a miracle in my body, and so I say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Maybe there I am seeing the disease pushed out of my body, strength rising up in my body. I can walk in health. I can do all that through Christ who strengthens me. God's word, when you speak it, should always bring about the pictures, a vision, an internal vision, a dream of something in the future. And this is saying that, that now since all of us are, can be filled with Holy Spirit. He's on the inside of us that we should be prophesying, dreaming, and envisioning. Now, to me, you can have daydreams or night dreams, but when you lay your head on the pillow, if all you have is horrible dreams, bad dreams, it's time to go to bed at night with God's Word in front of you. Instead of going to bed with a crazy book or a crazy show or CNN, constant negative news. When you go to bed at night and you haven't prepared your mind and you haven't fed your heart the Word of God, then it's just going to go in different directions. But before you go to bed late at night, make sure and take God's Word and begin to feed on His Word. Read a teaching book. Listen to a preaching message. And when you do, your sleep will be all around the teaching of God's Word. You'll dream at night beautiful, exciting things about your future and wake up going, hey, I dreamt that we had two more kids. Hey, I dreamt that, that God exploded beautiful things into our ministry. I dreamt. So you can dream at nighttime. Vision are something that you can develop yourself. If sickness and disease is pushing at you and you begin to declare that by whose stripes we were healed, so I am healed, then as you speak that promise, if it's just vain repetition, then it's not connecting to your heart. But if you, for instance, can't walk very well, and you're believing God for a miracle in your limbs and in your joints, and you begin to declare, Malachi 4, that I'm like a young calf from the stall, leaping and praising God, healing flows in my body in Jesus' name. Then you will literally see yourself la laughing, jumping, leaping, dancing. I'm healed in Jesus' name. There's something powerful about how you begin to conceive the miracle that you're believing God for deep inside of you. We have literally lived so far below what God has for us that we stopped prophesying. We stopped declaring what my future is going to be like. What is it you're dreaming about? You singles out there, if you believe in God for a spouse, it's time to declare that God has someone amazing and loving God and filled with faith and loves Jesus and loves family, disciplined in the Word of God, excited about serving Jesus, in love with me, I'm in love with Him. Wherever that man is, I speak life. Wherever that woman is, I speak blessing. I'm declaring that I'm married, healthy, blessed, whole, with lots of kids and generations of my family. What are you declaring? What are you prophesying to your future? People will ask you questions about your health, about your business, about, you know, and you say, well, you know, well, <laughs> have to wait and see. Quit it. You need to be prophesying and declaring, yes, my future is blessed, my future is prosperous, I am walking in the best, and it's mine. And Jesus declared it done, so it's coming my way. I know it's going to be amazing. Your words are lit. In fact, literally, I'll say this, your words continually declare and are prophesying your future. You are a prophet, meaning you are always prophesying your future. Now, I've often told people there are some negative people out there, and when they talk about it, they literally say things like, well, the flu's in town. I heard there's a new swine flu, dog flu, bird flu, cat flu, what flu. We'll get it first. We always do. And then they think that they're a prophet because it happens. No, you are a self-fulfilling prophet. I've learned to watch my mouth very carefully. Because if I give up on something, my language will begin to change. Well, you know, we'll, we'll keep trying there, you guys. You know, it's got to do with ministry. And well, we'll do our best. Let's just keep believing God. But I say it in a defeated way. 
I have found that whatever I'm believing God for, I need to be speaking it. And as I'm speaking it, this vision on the inside grows clearer, stronger, and it causes me to look to what, I'm, what, what I can't see with my physical eyes. It's interesting. The Bible talks about the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over the earth, trying to you know, move quickly on someone's behalf. It talks about God leading us with his eyes. And people wonder what that means. Well, that means you and I can literally see through God's eyes. When we look into his word, when we declare his word, we are seeing through God's eyes, his future. So how can you do that? Well, these are God's words. If, you know, if someone speaks to me and paints me a picture of their cabin that they just bought at the lake, and I've never seen it, but they've seen it, and they begin to talk about the long sandy beach and the big porch with green carpet indoor, outdoor, and, and the slide that goes down into the pool in the backyard. See, I haven't seen it, but as they talk about their cabin at the beach, I'm seeing it through their eyes. Their words reveal to me what they see. God's word is revealing to you what God sees for you, that you're a victor, you're a conqueror, you're forgiven, you are clean, you are whole, you are blessed, you are healthy. That's why we need to get into God's word and we need to be speaking it, declaring it, making sure that our words are building the kind of future that we really desire. You know, some people, this is so foreign to them because they've never even thought. You know, in the early, I think it was 1980, my mom and dad always taught on faith and always taught on the miraculous and believing God for miracles, but something happened in me. I, I had an epiphany and I was 18 years old where all of a sudden I realized all the other people who I'd preached at conferences or when I would read books, it always sounded like God's going to do what God's going to do. But when I found out I could do something about my situation right now and I could do something about the future that was ahead of me. So many of us have thought that our future was fixed, that nothing could change it, that, you know, it, it's like fate. That there's, you know, fate is that when, you're, when your time is up, your time is up. When that bullet's got your name on it, your name is on it. But I found out those things aren't true. The Bible says you'll live longer if you're obedient to your parents. Psalms 91, last verse says he'll satisfy you with long life until you're satisfied. Keep going. But when we believe things that are incorrect, that is when we get into trouble. Because according to your faith, so be it done unto you. Or in other words, according to what you believe, not how much you believe, what you believe. Those misbeliefs that are going on in your life are causing you to literally declare your future and live out the future you've been declaring. Jesus came to show us how to act, how to talk, how to walk, how to heal, how to walk on water, how to call down storms. And in John 14, verse 12, he says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is one of the most puzzling scriptures for many people because they say, how could we do things greater than Jesus? Well, I think one of the things there is that, you know, he wasn't, before he died, getting people born again because he hadn't died for their sin yet. And that's something that we as the church in this age can do for him. I love to just stay on this line that whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. When you look at the stories of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you watch Jesus walk the beaches, the streets of Jerusalem, the highways, as you see him talk, treat people. All that he does, he is modeling for you and I what God looks like and how we should act. Our authority. He had authority over storms on this planet. And he's saying to us that what you see me do, you can do. You know, there's lots of stories I could tell, but I, I firmly remember a story where uh, I was at a camp and I was uh, 
I think the sports director part of the time, but then I was given this cabin with, they kind of gave me the toughest kids in it. And at one point in this uh, week of camp, we had, we had this alarm go off and they said that a tornado uh, was spotted touching down and was moving towards our camp. We met on the beach, it was on a, a lake, and we literally could see across the lake uh, in this evening uh, light time that something was coming across and the waves were so brutal. And we quickly ran and, and everybody uh, moved the kids into a safe spot which was in the basement of the chapel or the uh, where the church was. But while we were down there, the people that I was with uh, prayed this prayer saying, Father, we ask that you would just protect us and bless us. And, and it was just kind of, a, it was done though in a very weak, ineffective way. And as soon as, you know, the head person got done praying and there's about seven of us down there trying to figure out what to do with all these kids at camp, uh, they turned around and walked back. And you could just hear them talking, doubt and unbelief. And I remember as soon as they walked over uh, the little hill where the beach was, I just stayed down there and I turned and I pointed in the direction of the storm. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, you will not come through this camp. You will go around in Jesus. Jesus name. Then I got up and helped them to move all the kids into the basement because that's what wisdom would do. You would move them to the safest place. The next morning, you know, when it, it all calmed down, the kids all went back to their cabins and, and stuff. And the next morning, uh, one of the counselors, Leon, you got to come see this. And so I came down and it showed, he showed where the tornado had come onto the camp grounds right at the beach and then moved along the shoreline away from the camp and went around the camp. We could see the trees and the things that were destroyed and then went back on this path. And it was so obvious, and I know that when we speak in faith and believe that we are protected from storms, whether God moves the storm and stops it, like in Jesus' case, or like the Apostle Paul, where the storm sunk the ship but could not kill him, and God even gave him the rest of the people on that ship to, to live and to be, he, he gave them their lives. I want to challenge you today. What are you doing with your life? What are you looking for the future? Are you waiting to see what God has for you? Or are you declaring it? Are you speaking it? Is every day, is there faith coming out of you? Are you dreaming? Are you envisioning? Are you prophesying to your future? Prophesying to your marriage, your kids, your family, your home? That is what we need to do to begin to take a hold of our future. Stop waiting for God to determine it. Father, I pray right now for every person watching that they'll no longer be silent because Satan wants to silence them. But Father, they will begin to speak the word of God. They will begin to declare the dreams they have for family, for marriage, for prosperity, for healing, for protection, and they'll never stop. They'll continue prophesying for the rest of their life over their entire family and home. Father, guide them in this. Let new hope rise up. And I pray the miraculous moves in their lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I pray that you've been encouraged. Tell folks about this program. Get them watching it with you. Tune in again tomorrow. God bless you. The spirit contemporary life means that you live an empowered life, one that connects your day-to-day -day existence with God's supernatural power. As Christians, we're to be the shining light in the world that we live in. We are to stand out in our workplace as great employees, gifted bosses, phenomenal CEOs. Our relationships should flourish. Christians should and can be the best of the best. If this sounds too good to you, then I encourage you to study your Bible and see what it really says about the Christian life. By practicing generosity, you are not only enriching your own life, and putting action to your faith, but you are also changing the lives of others. Those who need to hear about the saving grace of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that you would just excite them for their future. Let the word of God just penetrate deep into their heart and cause miraculous change. They would see miracles for them, but now, Father, they would cause miracles to come to others. I'm asking you to give us, Father, a ton of people that are going to partner with us to take this message to the world.
In Jesus' name, amen. Partner with us right now. Give us a call. Get involved. We'd love to have you be a part of this family here. All over the world, there are people who have not yet heard about the love of Christ, people who desperately need it. We all have an important part to play in sharing this message. God's given us this beautiful life to enjoy, but while you are living it, be very aware that the message you know that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Reaching people with the gospel is the very heartbeat of this ministry. This is why we work so diligently to make our programs relevant and contemporary, translating hundreds of materials into French, Spanish, Mandarin, Russian, Farsi, and many more. Because of the generosity of partners like you, our programs have been able to reach millions, not only here at home, but also in South America, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. There is still so much work to do. We will not stand by idly because people's eternity lie in the balance. We need to act now. People need to hear about the love of Jesus and His amazing grace today. Together, we will share Jesus in a spirit contemporary way. And together, we will see miracles.